Now, Executive Suites with WPRI.com reporter Ted Nisi. Welcome to Executive Suite. I'm Ted Nisi. Always glad to have you with us. Later on in the show, we're going to talk to the uh, head guys over at Wright Solutions down on Aquidneck Island. They are a tech company. They do a lot in the defense sector, and they have some interesting work they're doing down there. So we're going to hear all about their operations and what they're up to. But first, joined by someone who might be a familiar face to some of you out there, Joseph Nagel. He is the president and CEO of Delta Dental of Rhode Island, though, as we're going to talk about in a sec. We're talking about a little bit of a different uh, thing that they're working on now. But, Joe, thanks for being here. Glad to be here. Joe, I believe we were talking before the show. You have been in charge of Delta Dental for 25 years? 25 years in July, yes. 25 years, and I don't mean to age you on that. Uh, not at all, no, I feel just a little bit older than that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so 27 maybe, right? Yeah, um, so people know Delta Dental, um, but as I said, what you're here with me today to discuss, it's a new product you're launching, it's called Choosy, I yes. believe it's name. What is it? Choosy is a smartphone app that connects consumers to a great network of dentists, uh, eventually all around the country, who will give them considerable savings on any dental service they need. So it's not insurance, uh, but it can sometimes partner and wrap around insurance and complement insurance for the things that insurance doesn't cover. But it's also a great product and great solution for people who don't have insurance at work, usually part-timers, retirees, and so forth. Uh, if you uh, have a, a need for a, a service that isn't covered by insurance, typically, teeth whitening, uh, uh, adult ortho, or your, over your annual maximum of benefits, you can use Choosy to get significant savings there as well. So um, it, we were, I was looking at some of the pictures you guys have up of it. It's an app. It's an app, yeah. It's, uh, it's, you can download it for free on both uh, Google and, and the Apple Store. Um, there's no monthly charge to use it. You simply register on the app, book an appointment with your dentist, uh, you pay at the time you're in the office by just authorizing the amount that you see, so it's great transparency for every service, and you're done. So it's, it's not insurance, but it covers everything. I saw one reference to it compared to Uber for dentistry. Yeah, I think it's, it's very disruptive like that. There's nothing else going on in the dental industry uh, you know, field like this today. Uh, you know, it fits a need. Roughly, uh, you know, we have, for example, out of a million people in the state, there's about 600,000 that have dental insurance the vast majority of them with Delta. Uh, so there's still 40% of the population that doesn't have coverage, so this is great for them. So um, what you formed the new entity, Delta Dental did, that, that became Choosy uh, late last year in 2016. I'm curious, you had those conversations. What hold did you see in the market? You know, what conversations among all of you led to, you know, I think there's an opportunity here. Well, I think, you know, it's certainly a great place in the market for dental insurance, but as I said, it doesn't cover everybody. And everybody does need some level of care. And so uh, what Choosy does is it brings our collective purchasing power to bear for the user so they can get better deals than they can get in their own. So um, why would a dentist want to sign up for this? Because won't they make less money than uh, if, they, if they have an insured patient? Uh, that's in some scenarios, if, if all of your patients are paying your full charge, which is a very rare situation, then yes, there's some risk you could convert somebody who's paying a higher rate to a lower rate. But we offer very, very competitive reimbursement schedules. And some of the things you get here that you don't get in insurance is you get paid, your, your, your claim gets processed in real time while the patient's in the office rather than getting paid weeks later. Uh, there's no interference between the insurance company and the dentist and the patient in terms of what's going to be done. So there's an immediacy, immediacy of treatment. Uh, and so they're empowered that way. And they get more patients and more services per patient. So um, I, I'm curious, uh, Delta Dental, you're known for a lot of things, not necessarily technology and software development, right? So what kind of an undertaking was it for you guys to say, hey, we're going to go into a, it seems to be a whole different space. I mean, a, a, your core competency is dentistry, of course, but the, it seems like a very different thing you're doing here. Yeah, uh, we do use uh, apps for our Delta Dental business, and we have another subsidiary called Altus Dental as well. Uh, but those are kind of peripheral to the main product. And for Choosy, the app really is the product. It's right, what connects yeah. you with that dentist. And you really can't use the product without that app. So you know, we you know, look ahead and see what's changing and try to stay in front of that. Uh, this is a great product for millennials who buy everything on their phone. Um, and retirees are getting to the point where they're buying everything on their phone as well. So uh, it, it really has, has merits you know, for everybody out there. That's, that's so interesting. So what's the, um, what's the business case for you guys? How are you going to, I assume it's to make money. How are you going to make money? Yeah. 
Well, it's going to take us a while because the, uh, the premise here is we're building a national network of dentists that we're starting right here in Rhode Island and Massachusetts, and we're making great progress. But you have to recruit those dentists, and you have to, first of all, explain to them what this is because there's nothing else like it. And it, sometimes it sounds too good to be true for all the parties. Uh, so what we do is, uh, you know, we, we are out there recruiting. We are uh, building that network, you know, at th this point starting in New England and moving out from there. And when we reach a certain threshold of uh, dentists in our network, we, we make that app live in that area. Um, and one of the things we're doing to publicize that is we have a great partnership with AAA Northeast. AAA Northeast is announcing this and promoting it to all of their 8.1 million members in their footprint. Uh, just yesterday we learned that the state of Rhode Island is going to offer this to all of their employees and all of their retirees. We, we formed a, uh, a focus group of our largest employers uh, and first of all they all came which was very complimentary and every single one of them said they would offer this to their, to their employees. So it's the, the limiting factors are how many dentists sign up and we think that will be a lot and then how many people become aware of it. Uh, so you could become aware of it because you're a triple A member, you could become aware of it because your friends or family tell you about it, uh, your employer tells you about it. So people are going to hear about Choosy from a variety of ways and uh, you know, the, as the more they do, the faster we'll get to the point where it's a great venture for us. Interesting. All right, we're going to take a break. We come back, we're going to talk more with Joe Nagel of Delta Dental about Choosy and the future of uh, dentistry and, and getting that taken care of maybe on your phone. Stay with us on Executive Suite. Welcome back to Executive Suite. I'm Ted Nisi, and we are talking today uh, with Joseph Nagel. He is the CEO and president of Delta Dental, and they have a new an app. It's called Choosy. They're just you've just been rolling it out recently. We're taping in uh, September in September 2017. When did you really start to push it out there? Uh, we went live last week. Last week. Yeah, AAA made an announcement to all their Rhode Island members via an email blast, and we've been getting. Uh, Great activity, people registering on the site, downloading the app, and even starting to use it. Wow, so people are picking it up pretty quickly. You must be happy about that. Absolutely. and In fact, dentists are introducing it to their patients while they're in the office, too, to help them save money. So there's some, some really great traction taking place. Now, it's interesting, too. I mean, when I think of Delta Dental, I think of you as a Rhode Island insurer, you know, providing dental insurance for, for folks around here geographically. But as you sort of alluded to in the, in the previous segment, this, this potentially could be a much larger opportunity for you, right? You're going to look all over the country. Yeah, at the, uh, the Delta Dental model is in some respects a franchise. We can sell to companies using Delta Dental's name and network if they're headquartered here in the state. And uh, you know, we ha we're nearly eight times the size of our next largest competitor in the smallest state in the country, so it's not easy to keep on growing there. I would think so, yeah. So we, we started another insurance company in Massachusetts called Altus Dental to try and take advantage of that uh, the uh, infrastructure we had. That's going great, we have 170,000 members there. But even that is, you know, there's a lot of money and time it takes to set yourself up as an insurance company, and insurance companies don't address all the needs. So Choosy does, and we're really excited about its prospects. So, um, what's the timeline for further expansion here? I think you've, you already have Massachusetts as part of it, right? Massachusetts is uh, in progress right now. Where what we're doing is recruiting dentists by three-digit zip, and as soon as we get to a certain threshold, we turn that that app on in that three-digit zip. So that allows us to turn on certain locations in Massachusetts before the whole state is live. Uh, and it's, it's going great. Uh, you know, now that we're live, it, we're not explaining a concept anymore. We're showing real momentum to the dentists and they're seeing what it is. Now, when you, I, when you, think, about, like, when you think about oral health care and where things stand with that, is it, are people, uh, you know, I've been lucky, you know, working in places like Channel 12, other places, I've usually had a dental card. I could mm -hmm. go to my dentist. I could get, you know, cleaning, try to take care of stuff. Are, is it generally one where you where most people are being well served, or is there a large opportunity of people who who aren't getting regular dental care or don't have an affordable way to do that? Well, it's uh, it's both. Uh, there's a lot of employers who provide very generous uh, employee benefit packages, and dental next to medical insurance is considered to be the most common at, uh, you know benefit. Uh, but even there, uh, more and more employees are being asked to pay for a larger share of the cost. And so that, that takes some people out of the mix. And in the case of Choosy, 
you don't pay for it unless and until you use it. And then you only pay the amount that's on the phone that shows you what it costs for that, uh, that procedure. So uh, it's a way of people self-insuring if they choose they, they want to go that route. And the, it's interesting, too, because it reminds me with all the debates over federal health care reform and the changes in the models for the hospitals and the other providers, there's a lot of talk about the need to, to get away from uh, kind of uh, from where you can't really tell the price of things, you know, mm -hmm. people always say you can't. It's you, you can't walk in and say, okay, you have a baby here. It's ten thousand here. It's thirty thousand there. But this would be pretty uh, making a medical service a very clear consumer product, right? You're going to look down and say, okay, I want to get a cleaning. It's that much, right? You'll look on it. You'll find your dentist, and once you you can use do a search ahead of time and find the procedures you need, or you can see it when you're in the office. So if you weren't expecting that you needed a tooth filled in the office, you'll see that at that point in time and you'll process that payment. What happens is the dentist processes that transaction just like any other patient, and it goes through the cloud in a matter of milliseconds to the phone for this person to authorize what was done. So how's the, uh, talking about putting your Del Delta Dental hat on uh, here a bit more, how's, how's business as Delta Dental? How's the stability of the company? Great. Um, we're now on a consolidated basis about a $275 million a year company for revenues are the equivalent of net worth. We're about $120 million in net worth, so we're a very stable company. And this gives us really the foundation to expand and diversify with products like Choosy. So um, I've alluded to the uh, the healthcare debate going on. It's, it's kind of consumed the whole year, 2017, uh, as we've all discussed about that. How much of all that is affecting dental care, oral health care, whereas how much is that kind of off to the side and not as much a focus as like straight up doctor visits, hospital visits? Yeah, well it varies geographically. Rhode Island has always been uh, a state that provided very good dental care for its all aspects of the population. You know, Right Smiles is a program for the Medicaid population and it's a model for the rest of the country. So Rhode Island isn't really having as far to go as the rest of the country does. Um, you know, the, the Obamacare or the ACA provided pediatric dental benefits as an essential benefit, but it doesn't include a lot of the other things that you need. You know, adult Medicaid benefits in particular are not covered here, they're not covered in many states, and there's a pressing need to do that because people are going to the emergency room for services rather than having preventive care. So you want to see that expand, do you think that, does that seem like something that'll happen in your view? I don't know if it'll happen because the budgets are always pretty tight. But the, the, you know, the shame is that that benefit pays for itself in avoiding much more expensive care you know, in the, a different setting. Yeah, classic story. You don't pay in front, you're going to pay at the other right. end. All right, Joe Nagel, President and CEO of Delta Dental, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you, Tim. The app is Choosy if you want to check it out. Don't go away, though, because when we come back, we're going to talk, talk to Jim Lavoie and Joe Marino about Right Solutions, their company down on Aquidneck Island. Stick with us on Executive Suite. Welcome back to Executive Suite. I'm Ted Nisi, and for the second half of the show, very pleased to be joined by a company you might not have heard of, but I have known about for a number of years, but never really understood, so I'm going to finally find out. And uh, I'm joined by Jim Lavoie. He is the chairman of Right Solutions and the CEO of the company, Joe Marino. These two have been partners for a long time. They know each other pretty well, I would say, at this point, right? 37 years, I think. <laughs> oh, my time. God. So I knew about Right Solutions in a past life. I was a tech reporter years ago mm -hmm. uh, at Province Business News, and we would get these announcements from you guys. You had a, some defense contract had come in or you had some innovation going on. Mm -hmm. But I, I admit, I didn't even at the time know, I knew it was tech, I knew defense, but I wasn't sure exactly what you're doing. So as, as pithily as you can, uh, Joe, <laughs> how would you describe what you do at Right Solutions? Well, our, our main niche is uh, uh, information advantage, providing an information advantage uh, both to uh, the war fighters, we do an awful lot of business with the U.S. Navy, uh, and a growing uh, concern in the, in the commercial uh, field. We like to say we provide that information advantage all the way from the boardroom to the battle space. And what I mean by information advantage is taking all the amounts of data that are out there. Think of uh, all the information that comes in on a daily basis, be it a business person or uh, a war fighter. And how do you make sense of all that information? How do you make actionable information so that people can actually make better, faster decisions? Because we believe that that's in the battle space of the future, it's who's going to make the best decision uh, the fastest. That's really going to count. So in a way, it sounds like you're part of the, the, the big data revolution we're always hearing about. Crunching numbers, all the data coming in and trying to make it actionable for, for war fighters, for companies, for whoever. I think about Siri for the war fighter. You know, it's a, it's a matter of uh, the technologies, artificial intelligence, data mining, uh, deep machine learning. How do you bring all that to bear to give uh, the... Um, 
the client a, a, an advantage, be it in the business space or the or the battle space. Hey Siri, launch the, launch that cruise missile. Uh, I guess that'll be a, that'll be the iPhone 11. <laughs> what should I? What would you do in this situation <laughs> if you were me? <laughs> yeah, get some get some ideas there. So you guys, you, your jobs be partly on the cutting edge of some of this uh, defense technology stuff. Are there any new innovations coming out, or the Pentagon, anything really interesting you guys have been working on that you could talk about? Oh yeah, Joe. Uh, <laughs> Joe had this idea several years ago, and and uh, finally got some funding for it. But we actually just finished a job where we wrote software that interrogates systems and then writes software. So it's it's software that that begets software, and then uh, systems can communicate much faster and easier. And and I'm talking about software development that takes milliseconds to write the mm -hmm. software instead of the human who's going to take weeks and months. Perhaps, so the right. software is is looking at. One software looks at different software to know how to write a, a it, new set of software. It looks at an interface and says, "How would I communicate? How with can that? I communicate with you?" So it, we and we we first launched this in the gaming industry when we first started. We had a lot of gaming industry clients, and we called it a, a automatic protocol translator that just said, "You speak English, you speak French. How do I become the?" Intermediary. So Joe came up with this idea that said, "Hey, if we did it on the gaming side, why can't we do it on the defense side?" And he just finished a very impressive project that uh, I think is going to get a lot of legs going. Now, forward. when you're doing something like that for the defense sector, mm -hmm. do you do the R and D on your own, hoping the military will be interested or take advantage, or do you, in advance, go to some general and say, "Hey, I have this idea. Can I get some funding?" Or would you buy it at the other end if we do it? How does that work? Well, as a small business, I'm always interested in doing work on other people's money, OPM. <laughs> okay. uh, and we're, we're big in the uh, Small Business Innovative Research Program, if you're familiar with that. SBIR, right. SBIR. So you know, we, are, we have a phase three SBIR. And this, uh, just so people at home know, as I understand, this is sort of a defense department uh, program to try to help innovative, smaller t defense companies do these kind of innovations, 500 right? 500 people or less uh, to qualify for it. And it's the defense industry, also healthcare. I mean, there's a lot of different uh, pieces of the of the SBIR program, but you're right, it's, it's mainly for small business because we don't have the deep pockets for IRAD, and yet a lot of the innovation comes from small business, so mm -hmm. how, does the, how does the government fund that? We have a phase three SBIR right now that, at, I think this is still true, at least it was at the time, it was the largest uh, NAVC phase three ever awarded, $73 million phase three. What Jim's talking about with the automated protocol translator is a phase two SBIR. So we kind of leverage the SBIR program as our IRAD. Uh, you know, it gives us confidence that number one, the customer has asked for it, so it's not kind of build it and they shall come. Right. Uh, and that means a lot to us. Uh, and as I said, they provide funding for us. So, um, you're, you, as we were, we're talking here about the defense industry uh, in Rhode Island, we just coming off the annual Defense Innovation Days, where mm -hmm. um, they show off a lot of what uh, your companies like yours are doing down there. For people who are only dimly aware of, say, like electric boat, and that there's some stuff going on now in a naval station, how would you describe the vitality of the defense industry in Rhode Island these days? There is a tremendous amount of work coming down the pike. I mean, if you look at at uh, what the potential is for the state and for businesses within that state, uh, within the defense industry and even outside of the, the defense industry, because there's a big call right now to reach out for commercial technologies to bring in. But you have Electric Boat that has the $18.5 billion, the largest Navy procurement ever to come down the pike for the Virginia class. You have the Columbia class, uh, that a replacement for Ohio class that's coming down. So there is uh, in undersea warfare and cybersecurity, which is really the hub of what Rhode Island, a lot of Rhode Island businesses do in defense. It's uh, there is uh, bright, bright skies ahead. Yeah, bright bright future ahead. My, part of it is we took a breath. You know, we got behind, we 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 lost some of the technology battles because we didn't just keep pressing on. So I think we're, we're playing a little bit of catch up in some of the areas where that's we. That's interesting. Used to Expand leave. on that. When are you thinking? What period are you thinking of? Well, I'm thinking of the Walker Brothers, for example. We, we lost some technology edge when people sell some of our secrets to other countries, so we don't have that secret anymore. So if you, if you lose that competitive edge um, and, and you don't have another breakthrough, then you, you're just, you've slowed down. And we slowed down for a while. Now we're we're playing catch up in some of the technology areas. So uh, let's let's go back to the company to write solutions itself. So get, what's the origin story? How did the company uh, get started? <laughs> was it you two together? But are you already laughing? This we're already good. laughing. Well, because. yeah. I had, as I recall, Joe was in his pajamas. But but uh, we had this opportunity. Joe has always said there's got to be a better organizational shape than the pyramid. 
um, he, he was going to Harvard and he was coming back saying, hey, we know that the industrial era org chart of you just do what I tell you to do and everything will be fine has to be replaced in a knowledge economy that just says now we're relying on people's brains. You know, we talked about Brown and Sharp the last episode. It's that right. old v model. It's, it, yeah, so the new model is how to get people to give up their intellectual capital, hmm. which, which is what they bring to the table. And we decided to start a company in 2000 that just said, what if it was all about making people feel relevant and important and doing good work, would they bring more than just the transaction? You know, the, people come to work for the transaction because of kind of the primal level of Maslow's theory of survival. You know, they, they come to, they start so they won't freeze to death in their car. But you gotta do something past that. And we had to do something. We said, how do you, how do you make a person wanna be at the company, care about the future of the company, contribute to the future of the company on a daily basis, instead of just treating it as a transaction? So and that, you guys are very quest. big on the idea that culture leads to business success. You know, it's, a, it's the dream. We all hope that our bosses say, uh, oh, if we have a good culture, we'll do well business. But you, you guys really believe that. Culture is everything. Culture we, is our competitive when advantage. We, when it's, we started, uh, like Jim said, at my kitchen table 18 years ago, too early in the morning, by the way. Um, you know, we said, hey, the secret to success here is having a, a really deep relationship with your employees. Once you have that, it seems everything else pretty much takes care of its, itself. You talk about um, customer satisfaction. Well, if you have motivated, satisfied employees, more than likely you're going to have satisfied customers. So from our perspective, that became the hub. I'd say, you know, the culture was one piece of it. The other one was we started off with a basic premise in the company that uh, um, that said that uh, conventional wisdom is an oxymoron. You know that that we we take a look at everything from a fresh start. I, I contend that if you're still doing business the way you were ten years ago, you're on the road to extinction. <laughs> you know, so uh, given that, that's how we did it, and it left some, as Jim likes to say, it left some marks. You know, some things worked, some things didn't work. We learned the hard way. Uh, but today, I'd like to say we have a very innovative company, not just from technology, but business practices. So uh, we only have a little over a minute left. Um, Joe, what, we've talked a lot about defense, but you do have commercial clients as well. Give us a quick sense of, of what you do on the, in the non-defense world. In the non-defense world, it's kind of a continuum of what, the, uh, you know, on the defense side, we look for system optimization. How do we make systems, optimize them for faster decisions? On the commercial side, we do the same thing only at the individual level and at the business process level. So our clients are banking, large banks, uh, the medical industry, just got a, uh, a, a good contract with Boeing. So um, that accounts for about 20% of the business today. It's human optimization. Human optimization. So and you're working with some big companies, right? Oh, yeah. Boeing you yeah. mentioned yeah. there. Yeah. Boeing, yeah. Northrop Grumman. Yeah, General uh, Electric. General Electric. Yeah. Um, so it's. It's going good on both sides. So it's gone really well. Absolutely. <laughs> <It is. laughs> Ever since the kitchen table. <laughs> Ever since the kitchen table. But the next meeting was a little later. All right. <laughs> so Jim Lavoy, Joe Marino, thank you both for being here with me. Their company is Right Solutions. You can learn more about them online. If you missed the first half of the show, we talked to the CEO of Delta Dental about Choosy, their new app, kind of like Uber for uh, getting your teeth cleaned if, uh, if you're into that. So uh, I'd rather take the Uber to the bar myself, but that's okay. <laughs> you need to get those teeth cleaned. So if you want to see any episode of Executive Suite, they're all online. See you next week. <laughs>